Hello friends, Ashton here again with Gent Sense. Today we're going to be taking a look at a 2016 release that has not really had too much said about it, and that is Horizon by Davidoff. And apparently they already have a Horizon Intense. So this is not yet one year old and it already has a flanker. So we'll go ahead and check out the presentation for the box and bottle on this and then go ahead and jump right into the fragrance itself. Let's go ahead and check out the presentation here. The box is pretty simplistic. Just has a nice fade from like a light tan to a, a darker tan. Uh, Davidoff Horizon Eau de Toilette. This is a 4.2 ounce. Nothing on the sides. On the back you have the ingredients. On the bottom you have barcode and batch code information. And then the Davidoff symbol on the top there. The bottle is also fairly simplistic. Uh, you have the name Davidoff Horizon. It doesn't come with the cap. Um, you have this little mechanism that you just move back like that. And then you spray, and when you're done, you slide it back. You have Davidoff ingrained here along the rim, and you have frosted glass on the side. That gives it a, a nice kind of look, a nice added touch. And then on the bottom, you have your size information and batch code. It's a pretty simple design but it does look nice. This guy opens up mainly with ginger, grapefruit, and a little bit of rosemary, giving it a tiny little bit of an herbal feel. Now ginger and grapefruit are used all over the place for men's fragrances to make them nice, fresh, clean, and versatile. The big one that pops off the top of my head is Blue de Chanel, but it has been done lots of times. It's done pretty well here. It's mm, similarly in that same vein as the Blue de Chanel opening. Uh, they're not identical at all. You can just pick out the grapefruit and ginger the same way as you can in BDC. It's nice, like I said, it's versatile, but it's been done. As Horizon dries down, you get more vetiver, cedar, and a little bit of pepper as well. It's kind of interesting in that when you hit the midway point of this fragrance, it starts to remind me a little bit of Terre d'Hermes uh, in the way that you have citrus left over from the opening, the grapefruit with a little bit of orange, mixing with vetiver. It's not an exact replica of Terre d'Hermes, it just will remind you a little bit of that. Uh, it gives you the same kind of feeling. In the far dry down of Horizon, and I mean the far dry down, when it starts to get close to the end of the life of the fragrance, it actually reminds me of some old school 80s fragrances. Uh, it reminds me a little bit of Aramis Tuscany, and maybe a tiny bit of Azaro Porom. Um, not the exact same, and it's a more toned down version. It's not overpowering like some of the 80s powerhouses could be. Uh, it's just kind of along that same vein, maybe lightened up and modernized. This is a really versatile fragrance, better for daytime wear, spring, summer, and fall. Uh, winter, I'm not so sure about. To me, it seems like something somebody 25 years and older would wear. Um, it doesn't really come across as a young person's scent. Uh, once you hit the midway point and the vetiver becomes more prominent in the fragrance. With Horizon, you get pretty much average longevity, average sillage. Um, your projection is pretty decent for the first couple of hours, uh, like most fragrances. And once you hit that midway point and on, it starts to sit a little closer to the skin. Um, but this is not a terrible performer at all. Uh, and it doesn't smell really super cheap or synthetic or anything like that. Uh, sometimes I feel a little apprehensive with Davidoff fragrances. They have a little bit of a um, reputation for maybe making things on the cheaper side here lately, but this one is actually really nice. Um, I do think it's been done before. Like I said, it reminds me of a few different fragrances at different points along its evolution, but it's done pretty well. It doesn't smell like a synthetic mess. Um, and it smells pleasant and fresh pretty much the whole way through. So I can't really complain about that. It's one that I'll basically just spray on and go. Uh, if you're not really 
you know, caring too much about what you're wearing, you just wanna smell nice, kind of falls into that line of fragrances. The more that I wear Horizon, the more I actually like it. When I initially wore this for the first couple of times, I thought that it was, you know, decent, um, but nothing groundbreaking, so I just kind of wrote it off. But the more I wear it, the more I appreciate it. It's fresh, it's clean, it's nice. Is it groundbreaking? No. Is it something super new? No. But is it really nice to wear? Yeah. You can wear this out, people will think that you smell nice, you'll feel confident, and there's something to be said for that. Now, once this cheapens up a little bit on the market after a year or two, and you can pick this up you know, in the $25 range for a 4.2 ounce, I definitely think it's worth that because you can spray this on and go and feel nice and really like the development in the fragrance. The vetiver gives it a nice classy edge and it's, a, it's just a great overall versatile cheap scent. Is it as nice as like a Blue de Chanel or uh, anything along those lines? No, but as far as the Davidoff release goes, without getting any hype at all, it's nice. Uh, like I said, it's not gonna blow you away, but over time, it'll kind of grow on you as just a nice, dumb reach that you can just grab and spray on and go. All right, guys, that's all I've got. Let me know if you have smelled Horizon. Let me know what you think about it. Uh, I know that it is not amazing, but it's also not bad. It's just a, a nice, good one that nobody is really going to smell and think that you smell horrible, uh, but it probably won't blow anybody away either. Uh, until next time, like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time.